You pull out your eau de Larry and lay it on her. <gasps> what is this? I call it eau de Larry. Oh, Larry, eau de Larry. Ooh. Did someone just yodel? Anyway, it's the first in my new line. Really? I didn't realize you were a perfumier. Why, yes. Yes, I am. Ever since before. And I created this scent just for you. In fact, I've created several scents today just thinking about you. But this is the only one I bottled. Intriguing. Jasmine opens the bottle, waves it in the air, and inhales the lingering aroma. You bad boy. It's Jasmine. What else? She inhales again. And is that civet? Sort of. Ooh, la la. And there's something else. Tabasco? Well, maybe just a little. Do you like it? It's a very unusual combination. There's something else. Something rare and valuable. That's right. Wow, Jasmine. Your nostrils are like two beautiful bloodhounds. My god. You know just what to say, don't you? <laughs> is that amber grease? Exactly. How exotic! And it's from Mr. Wiggles, too! What? You'd be surprised. Huge whale like that. You just give him a little bitty bottle of Tasteless Dave's butt burner hot sauce. What? Of course, you can't dilute it in the aquarium water. You have to pour it straight into the blowhole. What? You gave hot sauce to Mr. Wiggles? You screaming douche puppet! Screaming what now? How dare you assault a defenseless whale! Defenseless? He weighs 40 tons! Mr. Wiggles is my best friend! You're horrible! I never want to see you again! Get out and don't come back! So I bet you don't want to know how I got the civet. Get out! How about we make passionate love just once, for old time's sake? Get out! Get out! Get out! It's a little red button. You press the button and the penthouse elevator door slides open. Aha! Progress! You travel a short distance up in the elevator, down a hall, into another elevator and up another flight. Whoa! This is totally wicked! Someday it's gonna be me living in one of these places. And then... Watch out, pedestrians! Larry Laffer has a balcony! The artist, Justin McMiniman, entitled this piece, One Percent. He later explained in an interview that the painting expresses his inner torment that only one percent of women have jugs this large. Another in the Justin McMiniman series, this one is entitled, Blow Me. He describes the painting as a celebration of the jug as a traditional American woodwind instrument. He also likes that a jug reminds him of boobies. Another in the Justin McMiniman line, this one is called Juice Box. He claims it sums up contemporary American culture as unhealthy, mass-produced, and environmentally ignorant. He also likes it because the word Juice Box sounds like lady parts. This painting is simply entitled, Penis. Well, I don't get it. This door leads out onto a deck. You can see some of the Lost Wages skyline out there. The sliding door is unlocked. Oh man, bummer. I spent this whole night looking for a door I can open by sliding a newspaper underneath and poking the key out the other side of the keyhole so that it falls on the newspaper. Every computer game character gets to do that except me. It isn't fair. Oh well, let's see the deck. You step out onto the balcony and an incredible vista greets you. Holy shnikes! You take in the sweeping skyline, the towering eight-floor casino, the brunette in the hot tub at the neighboring penthouse. That is positively the most drop-dead gorgeous woman I have ever seen. Imagine how beautiful she must be when you're standing within a hundred feet of her. Larry, haven't you learned not to judge someone by looks alone? 
I can't hear you! La 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 la! A beautiful woman sits in the hot tub regarding you with a mixture of curiosity and expectation. You'll need to find a way over there. It's morphin time! That doesn't work here. You open the sliding glass door and go back into the penthouse. It smells very strongly of other people's bedroom. There have been men and women together in here. You can tell. It sure is swank, though. And from the artwork, I'm pretty sure this is a man's room. It smells familiar. Silk sheets, tiger stripes on the bedspread. I gotta start taking notes. You've already broken in. Now you're going to defile the man's mattress? What John Waters movie did you just crawl out of? From the aroma of the bed, you're guessing the owner doesn't spend a lot of time doing laundry. You poke through the drawer in the nightstand. It contains handcuffs, ball gags, spiked collars, blindfolds, hoods, and a jar of chocolate hazelnut spread with a brand name you would instantly recognize. Nothing that could possibly be useful. I'll just leave it all there. Incidentally, if you're wondering how all that stuff fits in that little drawer, it may be thin, but it's long enough to extend into the room behind it. You open the closet door. Whoops! A deflated love doll tumbles out onto the floor. Ever the gentleman, you help her up. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. Hey, baby. You're beautiful. Wanna come with me? You nod her head. Score! You tuck the love doll into your jacket. At least now you don't have to go through the rest of this game alone. You close the closet door. That's better. Now there's less evidence that I've been here. You stop and turn around. Now I know what this room smells like. Adam, I promise to put this to good use. I hope. You go down in the elevator through a hallway, through a set of double doors, up a spiral staircase, and down three more elevators. You recognize that? It's one of those little kits with rubber patches and a bottle of special glue. It's for fixing minor holes in rubber and vinyl items. You snag the little kit. Press the button. The penthouse elevator opens. You go back out onto the deck.
You inflate the love doll with the helium. It empties the canister, so you toss it away. And here, nearly 100 feet up in the mysterious troposphere, the breeze and swirling air currents begin to tug at the love doll. Get a good look at her while you still can. Wow, an electronic rendering of a cheap plastic toy's pretend mammary glands with aftermarket nipples. You can't get much closer to real nudity. It's her mouth, or as it's called in the love doll industry, orifice number one. If you find her gaze slightly mocking, you're not imagining it. Red hair-like plastic emerges in regularly spaced tufts from the top of the love doll. You poke around inside her mouth. You find nothing useful, but you get the sense of what it's like to buy a horse. Her eyes are painted on, and they made her eyelids half-closed, so they only had to use half the paint. You try to run your fingers through her hair. It's like running your fingers through the grass in an Easter basket. Gotta tell you, you're actually more realistic than what I see on some of the chorus girls around here. Don't start a conversation with her. She never shuts her mouth. She smells like a new shower curtain. As you wish. You gently lay her on a convenient chaise lounge and have your way with her. Afterwards, there's the usual whine of, Why won't you cuddle with me? But she flatly refuses. Okay, you once more utilize the love doll in an unspeakable fashion. Afterwards, you're delighted to hear her give a sigh of contentment. You don't realize that you inadvertently dislodged the valve, and that sigh was merely a little escaping helium. You make another attempt, but you're sort of tapped out for the moment. The doll regards you coldly as you go through the typical self-recriminations and lies of, I swear this never happens to me. 